these things have been sitting on shelves everywhere and I'm starting to feel like I'm the only one that actually wanted this shoe. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey! Now before we get to dissecting this shoe, you know we gotta talk about the history first. Back in 1985, the Air Jordan 1 hit the market and as we all know, eventually became one of the greatest sneakers of all time. Nike released the Air Jordan 1 in high and low top versions, but we got 16 high top versions, two KOs and two low tops. We never saw the metallic red in a low top cut, only the high tops. Over the years, we have seen different retro iterations of the white and red metallic ones. Like for example, back in 2009, we saw the do the right thing ones. For me, iconic times again right there. Six years later, we saw the Air Jordan 1 low in a white and metallic colorway, but they called it the Varsity Reds, and those came out in 2015. Then two years shortly after that, in 2017, we saw the metallic red Reds finally come out in a high top OG, but it was a new retro style, not the 85 cut. And now in current time in 2023, we have another iteration right here, but these are considered to be the university reds. It's crazy because all the shoes that I just showed you, they're pretty expensive still. And you would think at least the hype beasts or the nostalgic collectors, they would be all over this shoe. Maybe it's just another sign of the economy's downturn. I know one thing though, it makes it a lot easier for us sneakerheads to get the shoes that we want and not have to pay three times the price for a pair of Air Jordan 1s. Can I get a amen? At this point, I think you guys know enough about the shoe and how they came about. Let's take it to the studio and break these things down. All right, here we have it. So as you can see from this box, it is a little bit different of a switch up. Typically we see the black box with the red branding, but this time they decided to go with the red box with the white branding on here. Doing it a quick kind of flip compared to the shoe, the white with the red. So I kind of see where they're going. So now looking at the other sides of the box, as you can see, you got your Nike branding with the swoosh right here. And then going to the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 1 Retro Low OG, white university red, white size 13, just for me. And retail on these things was 140 bucks. Now flipping open the lid right here, you got your standard white paper, and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. Okay, first impressions of this sneaker, honestly, they feel solid in some parts, but very interesting in other parts of the shoe. Now, before we get started with the review, I wanted to let you guys know I will be using two other shoes in comparison. We're going to have the Black Toe Air Jordan 1 Low and the Neutral Gray Air Jordan 1 Low. These recently came out over the past few years, but there's a lot of differences between these three shoes. So like typical fashion, we're going to start with the bottom of the shoe and work our way up. Now, looking out the outsole, you got your standard Air Jordan 1 bottom with your new retro vibe, all red right here on the outsole. You got a pure white on the midsole and a pure white stitch going up right there and then onto the upper pretty standard all white red sock liner red swoosh red on the back end but there's actually a lot of differences in details when it comes to this shoe compared to the other ones that i just showed you so starting with the upper and the leathers on here there's actually a couple different honestly like a few different types of leathers that i'm seeing more of a tumbled leather right here around the eye holes and around the front end of the toe cap area and then on the heel but then when you come to the top of the vamp and around the side panels right here you have more of a flat white leather and then you have this red leather, it looks like it's tumbled, but it feels really cheap and plasticky. And I'll show you guys in a little bit the details between these and the black toes and the neutral grays, because like I said, there's different elements to the shoe. And that part right there on the swoosh, to me, I feel like is a really big downgrade. Now looking at the front end of the shoe on the toe area as well, it's a lot more bulkier and square right here around the toe. If you look at these compared to the neutral grays, just the height of the toe area, you can see it's a lot more slim. And then overall from the top down view, as you can see as well yes the leather looks like it's nice you can tell it looks like a pretty thick cut but the overall shape of it it gives you more of a retro one low compared to an og one low and one thing that a lot of people like about the og one lows compared to the retro one lows these have a way better cut and a more similar cut to the original style the retro ones have a different end on the back end and actually i made a full video of breaking that down so i'll link that for you guys down below in the description but we talk about og compared to retro cuts again whole nother video whole nother topic but on the they have a really long tongue and on these these actually have a shorter tongue than we typically see but it was similar to the black toes but if you compare these to the neutral grays as you can see from the photos right here there's definitely two different lengths when it comes to the tongues now I've been rocking both the neutral grays and the black toe ones and truly I don't really care on that part just because when I put the shoe on I haven't really noticed it when I'm rocking it out in the streets and everything it doesn't really matter to me when the tongue gets to be way too long then that's when it's an issue and it's kind of scraping up on your shin so I think they might have done that just for rockability and the purposes of like hey if you look at the tongue like this around the toe area and where the lace holes are at 
you can see it goes right here at the top end and it's just a little bit of space extra so I kind of get where they're going on shortening it up but at the same time I feel like people do want that longer tongue because it gives you more of that OG nostalgic vibe but again it's kind of to each his own type thing let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section now going to the back end of the shoe right here on the heel this is another detail that I think is a really nice detail typically you have an embossed type of stamp right there on the back end of the heels where you can see the wings logo this right here is stitched and this is kind of more of that premium vibe something like you might see on the Travis Scott's or something like that now going on with the rest of the shoe right here you have an all red sock liner a white insole and a red Nike Air on the heel. Now, another thing that I noticed when it comes to the black toe Air Jordan 1s, these come standard with a pair of red laces and they have an additional pair of black laces to go with them. And a lot of people say, hey, they look good with the white laces, but they didn't come with the extra pair of white laces. Well, these in particular, they only came with white laces, so they didn't get extra laces on here. Now, before we get into the poll results on which one you guys like the most out of all the different colorways against each other, I just wanted to show you guys one more time the leather quality on the neutral grays people were kind of hating on this shoe but at the same time a lot of people love the neutral grays when they first came out this is a shoe that you got to have multiples of i have multiples of these uh the leather on these is nice it's a great rocker it's a great shoe these ones in particular are half and half and you can wear the gray and white with a lot more outfits compared to the red and white so i could potentially see why people might like this one more but overall quality standpoint and with these two shoes side by side i think the neutral grays are superior to a lot of the air jordan one retro lows that have come out over the past couple years and these in particular might be the golden standard of the retro Air Jordan 1 lows that we're starting to see come out because they're scheduled to be a lot more colorways coming out next year as well. Now, when I asked the people which one they like more, whether it was the University Reds or the Neutral Grays, 69% of the people, which is a perfect score, said that they like the Neutral Gray Air Jordan 1s and 31% of the people chose the University Reds. And honestly, I feel them on the Neutral Grays. This shoe, you cannot go wrong with these. I'm, honestly, like, they're a couple hundred bucks right now, but I think they're well worth every single dollar. Like, I done got my money's worth on all my pairs. Now, when it comes to the black toes, you guys see me do a review on these as well recently in the past few months. I like this shoe a lot. I've been wearing these. Soon as I got them, I bust them out the box and I was rocking them the same exact day. Yeah, I told you guys I doubled up on this shoe because I, I think it's a solid shoe. I think it's a great thing to have in the collection. Again, I got my gripes about it, but at the end of the day, I feel like the leather and the quality and the overall materials on this shoe was better than this one as well when it comes to the University Reds. Now, like I said earlier, the swoosh. If you look at the swooshes right here, you can see they both kind of look really firm and this one's a little bit more flat. But when I feel the two swooshes, I truly feel like the black toe Air Jordan ones, the swoosh is a little bit nicer and it doesn't feel as plasticky, but either way, they both do kind of feel a little cheap. So besides all that, I wanted to see what you guys think about the two shoes and which one you like the most. And I compared them and this is what everybody said. 84% of the people chose the black toe one lows and 16% of the people chose the university red one lows. That is a huge difference. And yes, I think the black toes have a lot more character. A lot of people do like the black tongue. Again, I would have liked it if it had the white tongue. At the end of the day, I do like these more just because it's a little bit more wearable. You can mess up that front end with the toe because you got that black area on the leather. Makes it a lot easier for, you know, winter time, fall time, all times around the year. So I get why a lot of people chose that. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section when it comes to these two shoes in comparison. So if you guys are wondering where I get these poll results from, I post a poll on my Instagram story every single time before I drop the videos and then I'll post the results here on the channel so if you haven't already make sure you follow me on IG so you can participate in the polls and see the results here now I ask the simple question is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash and this is what they said 71% of the people chose fire and 29% of the people chose trash so honestly that's a solid grade you know what I'm saying it's a low C but at the end of the day it's definitely a heavy majority of the people that like this shoe now me personally I know I don't like them as much as the other two, but I can 100% guarantee I will be wearing these things. I might be putting them on tonight. I was trying to keep them icy for the video, even though I got two pairs, but these are going heavy in my rotation. I'm excited to rock these. I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. If you want to see any other reviews, I'll have them linked for you guys at the end of this video and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you made it this far and you haven't already. All right, y'all, I'm out.
I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight-week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. Send my DNA, hey, the hey, only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. One I would never let you down and send my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I was made for it. It's in the DNA.